Hello everyone, greetings from Hong Kong. Hope you're all safe and healthy and welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to do a deep dive exploration of the three models in the Denon Home series. So let's find out what set these products apart in the marketplace and why these products offer your customer the best wireless music solution for the home. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently and we are very excited to be able to co-host with our EU colleagues. So time for some introductions. Joining us today is Achim Schulz, our EU product manager, a HEOS expert, and he's based in Nettetal, Germany, bordering the Netherlands. Our Japanese colleague, Yoshinari Fukushima, will be assisting him behind the scene while they broadcast from their studio. Phil Jones, our training guru, based in Carlsbad, near San Diego, will be co-hosting with Achim. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Take it away. From my side, I'm, I'm Achim Schulz, so I'm in charge uh, as a European product manager for the, for the latest uh, Denon Home speaker series. And uh, I mean, those products have been introduced uh, earlier this year, but I think uh, during this webinar, you will find a lot of interesting uh, information that you are eventually not aware so far. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a demo home series, and uh, the, before we go into uh, the details of the product, uh, Denon is, is a very important brand uh, in the Sound United family, and uh, our tagline uh, for Denon is amazing experience every day, and basically we, we try to, uh, to deliver this by, by innovation for, for better experience, and uh, I mean, we have a very long history, 110 years. Uh, actually, I started in, in 2000, so that means uh, more than 20 years with the company. And uh, I mean, when I started, alpha processing was more or less just developed. So that is something to improve the, the digital audio to make it more sound analog. So that was one of the big Denon innovations. Um, and then also, um, Denon eventually, you don't know, is, is really the defining audio company in Japan. So our market share, uh, especially in hi-fi, is extremely huge. Actually, it's even, even more than, than we currently have, have in Europe or the United States as an as a AVR uh, country. Uh, so that is very interesting to know. And then uh, this year is a great year. So we are celebrating 110 uh, years of, of innovation, 110 anniversary. And not to forget, we are also trying uh, to, make, uh, to make our technology really human. And I think one good example is uh, a couple of years ago, we developed um, a setup assistant for the AVR because AVR is, uh, is a very complicated product. And thanks to the setup assistant, uh, also customers that don't have so much knowledge uh, are able to set it up. So that is how Denon is, is positioned, amazing experience uh, every year. And um, in uh, 2014, we actually uh, introduced our, our HEOS speaker series and the Denon Home series is actually uh, the successor of this. And around two years ago, we started um, to thinking about a successor of the, of the HEOS speaker series. And, uh, we always try to listen very closely, close to our customer, uh, not just end customer, but also dealer partners. And uh, what we heard is that uh, most people, they want real hi-fi sound without uh, complexity um, uh, and a hi-fi sound that is, is very close to what normally a typical hi-fi system would, would deliver. So then the second thing, uh, it's all about streaming, so that's no, no big surprise. So this is what the customer wants, of course. Uh, and also uh, universal compatibility. So, I mean, Denon and uh, Sound United, especially Marantz, uh, we are offering a lot of products with, with HEOS built in. So that means uh, we have uh, really great solutions for a specific use case. And HEOS built in is now the technology uh, that, that binds everything together. So that means you can have an AVR in the living room, uh, you can have a sound bar in, in your bedroom, you can have a, a Denon Home 150 in the kitchen and that plays nicely all together. So actually HEOS, uh, there was a transition from, from HEOS as a brand name 
to now HEOS built in, and that will be found in, in currently demo Marans and also in the future, eventually in more Sound United products. So why um, does Denon Home sound so amazing? And uh, a little bit of background, how to engineer a great sounding all-in-one speaker is actually it starts with the, with the acoustics. And uh, acoustic, I mean, it's the acoustic hardware. So there are things like uh, it's the cabinet, it's, it's the driver, of course, it's, it's the volume of the cabinet. Uh, the, all these little things that uh, that you also need to do good when you do component uh, classic passive loudspeaker, and compare that with the with the older Heos range, uh, that is pretty pretty much improved. So we have larger cabinets with more volume, even though the footprint uh, is, is is equal or even even smaller. So that's that's good for the acoustics and friendly to the to the uh, interior of your living room and we upgraded uh, the drivers and we have more drivers in general. So the second thing uh, to make these things sound good, and that is a big difference to, uh, to a normal component loudspeaker, is that these smart speakers, they have a powerful DSP and a powerful amplification for each driver built in, and uh, we actually improved the chip and also the, the algorithm that are, are running on those chips uh, that is improved as well, and that is uh, a very, very important element because uh, when you listen to these all-in-one speakers and considering the size, uh, the amount of sound quality, uh, the quality you're getting from these little boxes is just simply amazing. And, and one reason for that is uh, these advanced DSP with the original Demon algorithm running on it. Then uh, the third element, and this is actually equally important is the sound tuning process. So that means you need uh, people, you need uh, advanced engineers with, with golden ears, sound masters that are able uh, to listen and to know how the DSP settings need to be tweaked to get really the best sound quality out of these, these little boxes. And uh, uh, other than the HEO speaker before, so now we assigned the Denon sound master to also work on these Denon home speakers and that uh, all these three elements uh, are the reason actually why Denon home uh, sounds that, that sweet and uh, how, because how the sound is then improved to the um, older HEOs range. So then take a look to the to the lineup uh, and starting with, with the 150, uh, which I have uh, next to me, very nice little handy speaker. So that is a, a mono speaker actually. So taking the left and right channel and, uh, and make it a mono signal. Actually, it's a, it's a two-way system. So it has a soft dome tweeter and a bass driver. Uh, uh, what is interesting to know is that this uh, speaker has a, has a two-channel amplifier. So there is a uh, a dedicated amplifier for the woofer and a dedicated amplifier for the tweeter. So it has, uh, of course, heels built in, Airplay 2 uh, can play back high rays up to 192, not just 96 like, 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 like some other, but can really play uh, up to 192 kilohertz. Three quick selects, I will explain later what this is, and it works with Alexa and works with, with the Google uh, Assistant. So then uh, the next model is the 250, and I put the additional features in, in green. Uh, you see, uh, it's first of all, it's a stereo speaker, so it has a dedicated left and, and, and right channel. Uh, it has then four channel built in. Uh, it has two, two tweeters, two mid-range driver, and a passive radiator on the back, and gives you simply more, more better sound stage and more deeper, more controlled bass. So then the king of the ring is the, the 350. Uh, so that is actually, it's, it's a beast. And uh, I will show you what, what this means in, in, in the next slide. Uh, basically, this is a three-way system, fully active three-way system times two. So there are six drivers, six amplifiers, uh, a much, much bigger box with more volume. And other than the uh, 150, 250, we have six quick select because simply on the top there was more space to uh, put them. So then uh, the direct comparison with the with the older Heo series, so that you get an get an idea, 
the green ones are the one, the parameters that we improved. So you see that, for example, we have uh, around 20% more, more volume. We have a, have a bigger tweeter, uh, 25 versus 19 millimeter, and we have a bigger woof, woofer. And as a result, uh, the maximum sound pressure level is, is around 4 dB higher, and also the product can play lower, not 60 hertz, but down to 54. So, and that's the reason why this speaker overall sounds sounds better. So then, uh, linking to the 250, so the, the predecessor was uh, the Heos 5. You can see also there uh, that this product, even though the footprint is, is smaller, has a more volume. So that means it it can play play deeper. Also, very much improved. And uh, finally, this uh, 350 versus the Hero 7, which was already a great performer, but the Denon 350 is simply uh, better. Uh, especially the amazing figure for me is if you look to the to the maximum sound pressure level. Uh, I mean, 104 dB uh, with very little distortion. That's that's a lot. And this product goes down to 32 hertz while the HEOS uh, 7 was just 50 hertz. So that is really a different, a different league. So you see uh, the design is, is new, but also it's a completely new development. And we really started from, from the scratch. And uh, I mean, the products are out there, you have listened to them, and uh, I hope you, uh, I'm actually, I'm quite sure you will share that those sounds sound pretty amazing. So then looking to the specification uh, and to the measurement and especially to the to the base performance, um, uh, you need to be aware that such a capable speaker, if you put that close to the wall or you put it uh, even in a corner, that the base can get easily too much. Uh, that is actually uh, not a problem of the speaker. It's more, it has to do with, with physics and the fact that if you put it in into the corner or close to the wall, the base just simply gets gets more. And with the with the last update, or actually the, the update be before the recent one with the U24, we added uh, a room uh, placement base tuning setting. And actually, this setting takes into account the position. So it's not a fancy calibrating system, which sometimes is doing things that you eventually even you don't want to. Uh, this is just for the bass and is just not changing the character of the speaker or character of your room, but it really takes into account uh, if the speaker is either freestanding or let's say more than 80 centimeters from the wall, I would say, or is uh, is that one in a corner or very, very close to a wall. And this setting is, is in the app. It's actually part of the, the setup uh, routine. So once in the Wi-Fi, the, the setup assistant of the EOS app will ask you uh, if this was the speaker located. You can change this. And the coolest thing is actually um, it's, it's on the fly. So normally, if you do calibration things, you need to calibrate and you can switch it off and, and then later listen to the difference. So here you can change the setting uh, and immediately you get a, get a result. So I'm sure Phil will, will show this, how, how this works. Uh, but the reason for this is simply uh, the speakers, they have such a great bass performance and uh, sometimes the location of the speaker actually overemphasize the base and we have setting edit recently that compensate for this. So technically it's it's very easy. Uh, so there are actually three curves to the DSP and you can see that uh, around uh, for wall. So there is a minus 3 dB curve uh, and you see also that it's just for for the frequencies that that are let's say below 200 uh, or uh, 300 Hertz where this, this effect actually takes place. So it's a minus 3 dB for the wall, uh, 6 dB for, for the corner, or 0 dB, let's say, full throttle for, for freestanding. Great for, for the garden uh, where you, I mean, need a lot of bass, actually. So that is a little bit about the acoustic uh, performance and acoustic uh, setup of, of the speaker. Let's have a look uh, to the design. 
And in general, the, the design, I think, is more, um, I mean, uh, less polarizing uh, in comparison to what we had uh, before with, with the HEO speakers. And the comment on all three speakers is the fact that we have a, have a glossy black high class uh, top top cover with uh, capacitive buttons with a proximity sensor. So that means if you go to the speaker, so the light will automatically go on and the buttons appear. So you have both, you have a nice look and you have the functionality because the good thing on button is always that you don't need your smartphone uh, taking out of your pocket or looking for a smartphone. Uh, you can operate the speaker immediately with those buttons and still you have the very nice looks. Then secondly, what is new, we have a really premium cloth on these products. It's a water and stain resistant and it's very, very difficult to get it dirt. So even if you take the white version with, with the gray cloth and you put some something, for example, you use it in, in the kitchen, so you can easily remove it. So the cloth does not, let's say, breathing the, 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 the dirt or the, the dust. So that is uh, another interesting thing. And um, we got a lot of uh, questions. Uh, why do the HEO speaker have these uh, power bricks, the external power supplies? Uh, it's very difficult to install them. Uh, in custom install, you always have a, have a second piece that you need to put somewhere. Uh, we have now on all Denon home speakers, the power supply built in and also the uh, extension cable then becomes very easy. So it's a normal figure eight connector. So you can easily uh, extend your, your AC wires if, if needed. And then also we have been working uh, with, a, with a company called Sound Extra from, from the UK. So they have uh, made great wall mounts and, and floor stands uh, for all three demo home speakers that are available. And uh, yeah, they're actually very nicely built and there is a cable management on, on the back. So that means you can feed uh, an AC cable and uh, the power cable in, in the other stand uh, in the left part. Uh, so it, the cables get completely invisible. Very nice piece if you haven't seen that. So please look out for them and, and get a sample. Very nice, nice stuff. So then uh, the quick selects uh, we, we have uh, is probably something you know already from, from our AVRs where we first developed them. And uh, with, the, uh, with the quick select, you can easily store uh, a scene like for or an internet radio station and then recall that with, with your fingertips. So to store that, uh, basically tune the radio station you like uh, to listen and then press one of the quick selects longer. So there is a little bit, a little flash from, from the blue LED and then it's stored. And from now on, you can actually uh, listen a radio station or an input like the auxiliary input or Spotify, which is also handled as an input. Uh, by just pressing the quick selects. Um, we are going to expand the functionality of quick select with the next update in February. So there will be more uh, um, features regarding Spotify. So that is also something that will be, will be added uh, very, very, very soon. Um, then something that was uh, already added uh, with the U24 update. So the last last week or two weeks ago, it was the U24-5 that was already at the 24. That is actually something many people have been asked for. So everybody likes our, our quick select and in general that we have buttons on, on the product to operate the product. But one uh, important function was missing and it's the skip track function. So if, if there's a playlist playing and you don't like that particular song and you want to quickly skip it, uh, it wasn't possible to, to do this uh, without taking the phone because simply there was no skip button. So we actually edit this uh, very, very easily. So that means in addition to play pause, volume plus minus uh, three or six quick, quick selects, we added um, uh, uh, skip track and go back functionality. So just uh, tap the play pause twice, you, this current track is skipped or press it three times uh, fast, you get the same song played again. 
So very useful, very handy, and uh, is a great, great addition to the uh, general functionality of those uh, top buttons already. So how to operate uh, the product? Uh, so, so you are in full control, so you can either control through the HEOS app, as you know, of course, you can call, control that with, uh, with Spotify, Spotify Connect. And also you can, since we have added AirPlay, so you can use uh, any, any uh, iOS device and stream whatever music service uh, is available and not available on EOS currently through AirPlay. And also it's now uh, Rune tested uh, compatible and you can uh, actually decide which way you want to operate. Yeah, so that was an uh, introduction and I would like to, to close with, uh, let's say, with, with summarizing all these points again. So I think we have a great, great sound quality and I explained the reason why, why is that and actually you should, should listen uh, if you haven't already done it. Uh, the second thing is uh, we have more uh, more powerful digital amps that play louder without distortion. Uh, we have a modern, more timeless design, which is less polarizing. And the feedback we have from, from the market and already the, the back order situation on then on home really proves that. Uh, so the design is, is widely appreciated. Uh, so I'm very happy about this. Um, we have the, the sensor controls on, on the top, uh, combining functionality with, with cool design. Uh, the three or six quick selects uh, that are very handy and will be even uh, expanded in functionality in, in February next year. Uh, AirPlay is built in, so it's 100% uh, part of the uh, iOS ecosystem and uh, fully wireless setup that was added. Uh, you know, before with the EO speakers, you always needed the 3.5 millimeter cable to transmit the Wi-Fi password. This is now fully wireless thanks to a Bluetooth-based setup or with Apple, it's even, it's even easier. So there is even no need to input the Wi-Fi password because everything is stored in the, in the Apple cloud. And uh, we have internal power supplies, which is great. Uh, we have this special, special cloth, so that is really uh, uh, water and, and, and stain resistant. And uh, last but not least, uh, also getting uh, more important every day, uh, so we reduced the power consumption, which is now uh, 2 watt. Before it was around 4.5 uh, watt. So there are many, many Im improvements. Uh, and last but not least, we have uh, microphones built in. So the product is, is ready to take a voice assistant and uh, the team is, is working hardly on this. So it's actually it's very close and in the first quarter, of next year, we are going to turn those microphones on. Uh, I can't give you any more details right now, but it's very, very close. So that was it from, from my side as, a, as an introduction of Den on Home. And uh, I will now give over to, to Phil to give you a more deep dive in what, what the product can do. Th thanks. As you can see, this is actually a global product. So you can see how much care that, um, that the team in Europe, as well as the US team and the Japanese team put into these products. There's a ton of great features. What questions do we have so far? Well, I think the best way to approach this is probably just to quickly go chronologically. So mm -hmm. the first one that popped up that was relevant is from Richard Rex, and he was asking, has the soundbar been discontinued? Uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, talk about uh, this or not, or if we. Okay. So I'll I think he's talking about the Heos soundbar. So the Heos soundbar. We used to have a, the Heos bar. Now there are, um, Akim, there are some new Heos um, enabled bars. Correct. There's the um, what are those model right. numbers? So, Actually, the um, the Heos bar is now the, the Denon Seven One Six, and the home cinema uh, is the Five One Six. So mm -hmm. it's. Uh, it's now in a Denon package, uh, so there is a different sound tuning on those products, but basically uh, they are based on, on the known Heos models. Exactly. So there is a replacement. And also the Heos Sub has a, uh, a new name as well. 
Um, so if you want to add a heel sub to it, and of course you can still do the things like with the heat with the older heel with the 716. That's the is that the big guy? You can still yeah, do the seven. rears. The, yeah, you can still decide if you want to take maybe two dead at home 150s and use them for um, rear surrounds. You can still do that as well. Right. Okay. So okay. you you can actually do a mix of a of an old subwoofer with a new bar or old bar with a new subwoofer then on home as a surround, uh, hero speaker as a surround, so it works vice versa. Exactly, and that's a big thing, like I mentioned in my house, I have a variety of, um, of Denon, um, Denon Home, older Heos, um, new Denon Home products, and Marantz, and Denon stuff. So long as, the nice thing about having that Heos, um, the Heos, um, almost like Intel inside, you know that if you see that, those products are compatible with each other. So that is um, the nice thing. Okay, next question. The next question is from, and I hope I'm not butchering your name, Turker, Turker Baran, is asking mm -hmm. if those the base tuning, the dB values, are they based on tangential or oblique room modes? This Ooh. is probably a question for Achim. <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it has nothing to do with, with room modes. Um, that, that is a different topic. topic. It's basically, um, the acoustic effect that uh, that there is a difference in bass response, whether it's it's freestanding, or it's it's closer to the wall, or even in a corner, and we are we are just compensating this, and it also can be used. I mean, even even though the product is uh, is, is freestanding or relatively freestanding, uh, some people might even think there is still too much bass. Uh, you can use this setting to control the very low end of the bass. So if you have a bass control like we also have, this is more goes more to the to the higher ranges of mm -hmm. of the bass reproduction. But this one is really really the the, the bottom end, and it, it's very helpful. And the good thing is you can try that out on the fly, so you will immediately hear result, and it's really a stunning effect. So please check check that out. It's really a cool feature. Exactly. Okay, next question is from Carson. That's more a practical question. Since the speakers have wall mounts, could they be used as height speakers for immersive systems? There's a limitation there. Uh, um, currently, what ends up happening is we mentioned that you can utilize a pair of Denon homes for rear surrounds on the bar on using um, one of our heels enabled sound bars. Um, however, um, to use it as a rear surround, you, the receiver would have to have a transmitter. Currently, right now, the systems are designed for um, to be uh, the, the, the receivers do not have that that capability, and that's a conversation that we have to always look at because in order to add that, we would have to add additional cost to every receiver that's made. So the question is, how many customers would actually utilize it, and is the demand high enough to um, um, to make sure to increase the price for everyone. So that's something that we're always looking into. Um, it is definitely something that could possibly be done in the future, but all depends on customer demand. Would that be the best way to say it, Akum? Akum? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So thank you guys very much for coming, and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you. Bye.